The Brexit vote here in the UK has made my nation and many others across the globe rather uncertain, to say the least. But what does quantum mechanics, a branch of physics which is inherently uncertain, have to do with this at all? At the heart of quantum theory is probability, though it's not exactly the same probability that you and I probably use, pun not intended, in our everyday lives. That use is due to essentially a lack of knowledge or some sort of uncertainty. So we use probability to work out the odds of certain outcomes. But it's very difficult to remove the probabilistic aspects of quantum mechanics by supposing there is extra information. That makes it far more weird. And as Richard Feynman said, if you think you've understood quantum mechanics, you haven't understood quantum mechanics. It's basically the first two laws of quantum club. That's not to say that quantum mechanics is no good. In fact, it is very, very good. It's able to predict the outcomes of experiments incredibly well. I mean, it's the best science we have in that regard. The problem comes with the interpretation of what it actually means. And that's further compounded because we have many different interpretations of how we think we should understand this theory. You've got the Copenhagen interpretation, which is all based around a conscious observer like you or I collapsing a wave function to find the answer. Then again, there are sort of more minimalistic and statistical, I guess, interpretations such as the ensemble interpretation and other ones including the de Broglie bone pilot wave theory. The problem is there is no experiment we know of yet that can determine between the different interpretations. They all give the same results so we don't know which one's right and they all have some problems associated with them. Now you might be wondering, why the hell did I start talking about Brexit and then go on about quantum mechanics, which is the study of the atomic and the subatomic? But there is one interpretation that may have some implications on the referendum. That is the many worlds interpretation, which essentially says that any time there is an experiment, any time there is a choice, any time there is a possible outcome, the universe will split, creating real timelines for each of those possible outcomes. This has made it an incredibly popular thing to use in science fiction. In the EU referendum, 33.6 million people turned out to vote. And if this many worlds interpretation is correct, that means every single voter caused the universe to split into two. That means following the vote, there would have been two to the power of 33.6 million parallel universes in existence just due to that referendum having taken place. That's around one with a million zeros on the end, or 10 to the million. It's a staggeringly big number. I mean, it's bigger than a Google. It's bigger than a Google Googles. I mean, it's even bigger than a millinillion, which is the biggest number that we have a word for in our short scale of powers of the 10 that starts at a million, goes to a billion and trillion, etc. In half of all of those universes, the result would not have changed compared to the one that we are in right now, and we would have voted to leave the European Union. But in the other half, the result would be completely different. And all of this stuff that's going on right now would not be happening, probably, because we would have voted to remain. The thing is, though, the probability associated with each one of those universes is not the same. We can treat the EU referendum as a binomial experiment. That's because we have a load of independent voters who chose to either leave or remain with some probability. And we'll assume that probability was the same for everyone. I know it's not quite as simple as that. The data shows that when you break down by age or region or education. But as a first guess, we'll stick with this. Let's call the probability that somebody voted for Remain as being the letter P. Therefore, the probability of asking to leave would be one minus P. Now you might be asking, well, what is the value of P? Well, that actually comes from the result of the referendum itself. It's 48.1%, a mere 1.9% away from 50-50, which seems 
absolutely tiny. It's only 680,000 of the voters that really tipped it the way it went. But as we'll find out, actually that 1.9% is huge. This is the resulting probability distribution. It shows you the likelihood of being in a timeline where the percentage of people that voted remain is given by the horizontal axis. And <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's just one gigantic spike at the result that we actually turned out with. Let's actually look at it at a logarithmic scale though. And yeah, <laughs> it's still pretty damn sharp, in fact, it's got to the point where the numbers become so small that the computer can't even deal with it. it it's so close to zero. In fact, it turns out that that 1.9% we needed to get to 50-50 and therefore possibly just tip over the other way is 220 standard deviations or sigmas. You might have come across probabilities being discussed in terms of sigmas, perhaps in particle physics when they announced the result of the discovery of the Higgs boson at a five sigma level. Three sigma is about 0.13%. That's about the likelihood of giving birth to triplets or more. Uh, then say four sigma, that is two times the probability of getting a straight flush in regular poker and five sigma for instance is the likelihood of dying in any given plane journey. It turns out that our probability of 220 sigma to change the outcome of the referendum is one in 10 to the power 10,508. So while it may feel like the result was so close, just doing a cursory analysis of the probabilities of a different outcome shows that it really was almost zero for all intents and purposes, which will make some people very joyous with the result that came out and others possibly even more angry or depressed. But you can't argue with the numbers. Thank you so much for watching the entirety of this video. It's much appreciated. Um, do write in the comments what you think about the referendum, how things are going, what you think the likelihood of a, of a second referendum happening would be and, and where you think that might go given all of the things that have happened. It's much more difficult to do a mathematical analysis of that, but um, I leave it to you to try. And do remember to like and subscribe and share it with your mates. All right, cheers.